If you know me well, you know that even though I love beautiful shoes, I basically live in white trainers. So I wanted to talk you through how easy it is to put a pair of these together. I do have a full step-by-step -step tutorial of this inside my online footwear masterclass, but let's do a quick run through of it together now. So the first and most important thing when you're putting together a pair of sneakers is making sure that your lasts actually fit inside the cup soles that you have. Once you've got matching components, we can go ahead and get started. First thing I wanna do is either make my pattern from scratch or just go ahead and download one of our patterns from the website. Now these patterns can tend to have a lot of pieces, so make sure you keep them organized. This funny looking piece here is the quarter, which means it's sitting on the outside of the shoe on that side and on this side. So we need to have two of those. Now you'll notice on the back, we've got this back tab going on here. And that's what this funny looking piece looks like there. So if you imagine we've got our quarter on the side here, this back tab would then go over the top like that. And it would join up to our other quarter, which is on the other side. Now, when it comes to the eye stays, that's this piece here. And this actually gets attached also to the quarter sort of like that. And you can sort of see what I mean, that it's that piece that goes down the front like this. And it's where the eyelets actually go through. That's why we call it the eye stay. So we need to have one of those for that side and one of those to go, of course, on the other side as well. Now the eye stay and the back tab are such a great opportunity to do a little color contrast. So as you can see with this sneaker, I just went all white everything because this is pretty much what I live in every day. But of course, if you wanted to, you could be doing a different color for every single piece. But especially with the eye stays, it's just a nice opportunity to get a pop of color at the front and with the back tab, a pop of color at the back as well. Once you've got your patterns together, you can go ahead and trace out all of your pieces. Now I've done these in all white everything, but don't forget you can go ahead and pick different colors for every single piece if you wanted to. Once you've cut out all your pieces and your lining, we can go ahead and stitch it all together. Now it's really important that we remember to add some reinforcement tape just underneath where we have our laces. That's to help avoid stretch when we are wearing the shoes. It's also optional, but I like to put eyelets in here as well, just to give a bit more strength to the lace up area. So once you've got your uppers all stitched together, we can go ahead and put them to the side and move on to our insoles. Now I like to add a little bit of foam comfort to my insoles and then go ahead and cover it using the same leather that I used for my lining. Once I've done this, I can attach the insoles to the last and I can go ahead and stretch my uppers over the last, attaching the lining to the base of the insole. Once I've got the lining in place, we can put in our stiffeners. Now this is what's gonna help make sure that the shoe maintains the shape of the last once we actually remove the last at the end. Once you've got those stiffeners in place, you can go ahead and last the upper layer, making sure that it's all pulled really nice and tight around the last.
They're starting to really look like a pair of shoes now, so we can go ahead and remove the last and place our shoes into the cup sole and get ready to start stitching them in. Now you could just glue your cup sole onto the base of your sneaker, but it's not gonna be very strong. So I highly recommend you use what's called a speedy stitcher to stitch your cup sole onto your shoe, making sure they are on there nice and securely. Once you've got your soles in place, you can go ahead and lace up your sneakers and there we have a finished pair. Now remember I've got a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this within my online footwear masterclass, but I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna teach you how to make these classic white trainers and throughout these tutorials, you'll hear me refer to them as sneakers and trainers. In Australia, which is where I'm from, we call them sneakers. Here in the UK, they call them trainers. I think in the US, they call them sneakers, but I sort of bounce between. Either way, I think you'll know what I'm talking about based on the design. And I can't wait to show you how I did this. A few things to note. In this design, I did do a padded tongue and also some padding around the back of the sneakers. <laughs> and you can see I used the I Can Make Shoes flat last and the I Can Make Shoes cup sole. And there's a couple of tools that I used in this tutorial which don't come in the toolkit and I may or may not have talked about before in my online course. And the first one is called a speedy stitcher. Now this is used to stitch the soles onto the trainers around the base. And in the studio here, we have a bit of a joke. We call it the not so speedy stitcher because it does take quite a bit of time but the results are amazing, so it's definitely worth it. And the other one is the leather hole punch. I actually use that to punch the holes around the cup sole in order to stitch it to the shoe. So one thing I'll say on that is try not to get a super cheap hole punch because it will just absolutely kill your hands. A really good quality one shouldn't feel like too much work to actually punch the holes through. That's enough from me. I'm gonna dive straight in and show you how to make a pair. Making the insoles for these sneakers is gonna be so easy, so let's just dive straight in and get started. What I have in front of me already is my last bottom pattern. Now, if you haven't watched one of my videos on how to get the last bottom pattern, I'll link it down below somewhere. Um, but it's essentially a pattern of the very base of the last and it's essentially our insole pattern. So I've got my last bottom pattern already and I'm simply gonna trace that out onto my Texon board. Now most importantly, we're remembering to flip the pattern to get left and right feet. Once we've traced it out of the Texon board, we can go ahead and do the same thing on the back of the foam. 